In this video, we're going to continue the investigation of applying different derivatives to application problems. In this case right here, we're given this position function. Um, this is a little bit different than the previous position functions that we've seen. The previous examples we've shown have been your position in terms of time and the vertical height of an object. This is a little bit different. In this case, f of t is outputting the distance an object is to the right of a certain origin point. So for an example right here, a couple of different values. If we plug in a 2 into this function, we get out a 1. If we plug in a 4 into this function, we're going to get out a negative 3. Visually, what that's representing is there's some origin point right here. And what this value means is that after 2 seconds, this object is 1 foot to the right. This point right here, the negative 3 is representing, after 4 seconds, the object is 3 feet to the left. So this object is oscillating left and right in, re in reference to this origin point right here. Positive output values for a function mean we're, we're to the right of that origin point. Negative output values simply mean we're to the left of that origin point. In order to tackle the questions we have in front of us, we're going to need to compute the first and the second derivatives. So first we have the position function. So f of t tells us the position of this function t seconds later. The first derivative would tell us the velocity of this function. So in this case right there, that would be negative 2t plus 4 is the first derivative. The second derivative of this position function would then be telling us the acceleration of this object. In this case, it would be negative 2 if we differentiated. And lastly, before we jump into these questions, it's always important to know the outputs. Again, for these derivative functions, they always have the same input. In this case, t is always going to be seconds, but the outputs change are the rates of the change of the previous function. So first, we're going to start with an output of feet. <clears throat> This first derivative, which is the velocity, is going to output feet divided by the input value, which was seconds. The acceleration function is going to compute feet per second per second. And as previously discussed, the shorthand for writing this statement right here would be feet per second squared. All right, then, for number one, the question is, is when is the object stationary? In this case, the object is stationary at any instance when the velocity is equal to zero. So in order to answer this question, we simply need to take the velocity function, which is the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. This is a pretty easy question to answer. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides to get negative 4 equals negative 2t. Divide by negative 2 to get that t equals 2. So the answer in this case would be that this object is momenta momentarily stationary or instanta instantaneously stationary at two seconds. The second question is asking us, when is the object moving to the left and to the right? So in this question right here, we need to remember what the output values mean. Again, positive output values mean we're to the right of the object. Negative output values were, were to the left of the object. So in this case right here, the question becomes actually is when is the velocity positive or negative? If the velocity is positive, it means we're moving in the right direction. If the velocity is negative, it means we're moving more into the left direction. It's really important to say for this is this is not making a statement of whether the object is to the left or to the right. We're looking at the velocity or the change in the position. In this case, if the change is positive, it means in that instantaneous moment, the object is moving more to the right. If it's negative, it means that object is, maybe it's to the right of the object, but it's moving towards the left. And so we just need to solve these two inequalities as knowing when our velocity expression is greater than zero, when our velocity expression is less than zero. And important to say, we're not saying when it's equal to zero, we actually answered that question already in number one. And to be honest, that's going to help us with this. And you'll see in one second that change from negative to positive velocity should have happened right at two seconds. If we solve these, again, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides to get negative 2t is greater than negative 4. I'm going to divide by negative 2. In this case right here, I need to make sure I flip this inequality sign when dividing by a negative. The same thing over here. I'm going to get negative 2t is less than negative 4. Divide by negative 2 to get t is greater than 2.
All right, and then lastly, before we move on to question number three, I just want to make the statement that if we want the intervals for which this is then moving to the right, we found that when t was less than two, but we're looking at a domain restricted from zero to five. And so we'd say it's from zero to two seconds, it's moving to the right. At two seconds, we actually are stationary for a second, and then between two seconds and five seconds, we're moving then back to the left. So our third question is asking us, what is the velocity and the acceleration when at one second? This isn't too tough. All we need to do is plug in a one for both of these, which I'll show real quick. So it doesn't take much to plug in one to both of these, obviously. Um, when I plug a one into the, the velocity equation, I get two. Remember what that means is the velocity at one second is two feet per second. That means it's moving in the right direction at that point at one second, which agrees with our statement right here. On the interval between zero and two, we were going to the right the whole time, but in this case at two feet per second. The acceleration in this case is negative two. That's feet per second per second, as defined earlier from the units of the acceleration. And again, what this means, what acceleration is describing is how the velocity is changing. So even though at one second, the velocity of this object is moving to the right at two feet per second, the effect of cell acceleration is changing that velocity into the negative direction. And that should make sense when you see the link between these and our previous answers. In this case, at one second, our object is moving to the right, but the acceleration effect is, is lessening that more to the left. In fact, at one second later, at two seconds, this object has stopped moving to the right, so it's stationary for a second, and the acceleration due to this acceleration factor right here is pushing it then to the left, and it's gonna start moving faster and faster to the left. It's important to note that our acceleration is constant here, right? So plugging in one actually didn't do anything. Any value I plug in for t on this domain right here would output a negative two. And that doesn't mean the object the whole time is moving to the left, but what it does mean is that however the velocity is starting, in this case, the velocity is starting in the positive direction right here, it will slowly move to the negative because the constant effect is changing the velocity in the negative direction. All right, now the fourth question is a bit tricky and really interesting and important in a way to analyze things like these position functions. In this case, we're being asked is when is this object speeding up? First, I'm not gonna write it here, but you can see in text and resources online, the relationship between velocity and speed is the fact that speed equals the absolute value of velocity. Velocity has a magnitude or, or a strength, a size, right? But it also has a negative or positive that we've just seen right here. A negative or positive is telling you the direction of the speed. And so what speed simply is, is the idea of velocity with ignoring the idea of direction. Specifically for this question though, the important thing to understand is that something is speeding up if the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. Just to talk broadly real fast about this and then I'll show you the work here in a second. This object starts moving to the right, but as we previously just said, the effect of acceleration is trying to make the object go to the left. It doesn't win for the first couple of seconds, but at two seconds, the acceleration effect wins and starts pushing the object the other way. So specifically, again, the velocity, if it's the same sign as the acceleration, it means you're moving up. If the velocity is a different sign from the acceleration, it means you're slowing down. So, and without the work, but just show you real quick, what that means is, and hopefully this makes sense, is this object from zero to two seconds is slowing down because its velocity is going this way, but acceleration is trying to make it go this way. So it's slowing down till it stops at two seconds, and then it starts speeding up in the negative direction. So for this problem, since our acceleration is always negative, to find when this is speeding up, we simply need to find is when is our acceleration less than zero, or when does our acceleration have this, or sorry, excuse me, when does our velocity have the same sign as our acceleration? Though a second ago we just solved this, we know that this is when t is greater than two, or more specifically, we know this right here. We, this is exactly the same inequality that we found when the object was moving to the left, and again, to say it again, that is when the object is speeding up because the acceleration that's making it go a certain direction or move the velocity in a certain direction is negative two. So once it starts moving to the left, the acceleration is making it move faster to the left. 